All right. So you notice I have a white belt on that so you can see what my hips are doing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try to project my voice because I'm now away from my computer. We are going to start with kind of an overview of what we're hoping to accomplish today. So today, it's not about patterns. It's not about syllabus. It's about taking pride in your dancing. What does taking pride in your dancing mean? It means that we are celebrating anyone and everyone who wants to dance or even who wants to move. It doesn't have to be any formal style of dancing. That's what we're doing today is kind of some technique and some style for the American smooth dances. However, you do not need to know anything about American smooth to really enjoy this workshop. What we're going to do is do some technique to kind of give you a foundation. And then we're gonna talk about the different styles and the different trends so that you can work on having fun and really feeling good about your dancing in whatever form it is, whether it's social, whether it's just at home right now, or whether it's competitive, you really should be able to take pride in your dancing from some of these tools and techniques I will give you today. All right. So American smooth, traveling dances, they do not stay on the spot, they move. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do a simple, simple exercise if you want to, or if you just wanna watch me do it, we're gonna take three walks forward and three walks back. I'll do it from a side angle. So we'll start with the left foot. We're gonna go walk one, two, three, now have the right foot free, go back one, two, three. At first, dancing should be as easy as walking. These three walking steps forward and back are going to be your warm up whenever you're doing your smooth or your standard dances. And if you're listening to me and say smooth, standard, what does that mean? Just dancing. So again, Starting with the left foot, it's arbitrary. It's neither leader nor follower, just starting with the left foot. So go ahead and walk forward. One, two, three. Have the right foot free. Go back. One, two, three. Now, since we're doing a particular style of dancing, the American smooth, what we want to make sure is that whenever we go forward, we use the heel, I don't know if I would see, and I just showed you my backside, but. <laughs> so whenever we step forward in American smooth, we're gonna go forward on the heel, one, two, three. Now when we go back, we cannot step with the heel. We go back, one, two, three. Um, so we're gonna use these steps to cover a number of techniques. So when we walk, in American smooth and standard, we want to go straight forward and straight back. We do not want to look like we're searching for our horse. So that's not how we dance in American smooth. One, two, three, back, one, two, three. Really extending our stride that nice smooth action. So what have we talked about so far? We've talked about walking in a straight line with no daylight between the legs and trying to make sure that we're using the proper part of our foot. This is a great way to get your body moving because a lot of times, especially if you are an amateur dancer, you rush in from work for your lesson or for your group class and you never warm up. This is a great warm up. So again, I'm gonna do it straight towards you. We're gonna go left foot forward, right foot forward, left foot forward, right foot back, left foot back, right foot back. All right, everyone who has their camera on, are we doing good so far? Thumbs up. <laughs> good, I got four thumbs that I can see. All right, so one more thing to note that is different from your Latin and rhythm dances for American Smooth, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not going over time, is that whenever we go backwards, we kind of do a toe release. 
We want to make sure that we continuously go backward instead of keeping our toe on the ground and really stomping. Doesn't feel good to your partner if you have one, and it's not the style of American smooth and standard, international standard. So if you can see, I'll try to exaggerate a little bit. When I go back, I release the front toe to keep myself going. Now, when I go forward, I make sure that I step on the heel. And when I go back, I release the toe. Things that are fairly fundamental and sometimes seem easy, but when we're thinking about music and choreography and steps and partnering, it's often easy to forget. All right. So I think we've done enough for one workshop on the lower body. Here comes my favorite part of training and technique. We're going to work on the frame, the elusive frame of a smooth or a standard dancer. So now, let me get in real quick. Let me level with you. You do not need to spend hundreds of dollars on these weird contraptions to put yourself in a good frame. You don't need to. There's a simple kind of home decor tool that is great for dancing and for frame exercises. Let me show you. What is this? <laughs> what is this you say? It's a curtain rod or shower curtain rod. It's simple. It's like, yes. So some of my long-term students are in this class right now. So that's why they're making faces because it's it can be kind of a torture tool, but it's fantastic for frame. So it's just a simple shower curtain rod and I'll show you what to do with it. It's like five, six dollars at like a Ross or a Target or a Walmart or the equivalent wherever you're from. So make sure that you've extended the pole so it's long enough. Let me get in just a little bit close. You don't need to see my head for this or my feet. You put the pole on your elbows and then you widen the elbows like you would in a good frame. And you try to make sure that your hands are slightly below your elbows. I realize I'm wearing really dark colors, so it may be hard to see. This representation is your good, smooth, and standard frame. What we are trying to accomplish with this pole is giving you what we call biofeedback if your arms are dropping. So my long-term friend and coach and mentor, Tony Redpath, introduced me to this method. So she's saying that whenever your frame is like this, it makes a W and it's a weak frame. I know it's kind of harsh, but <laughs> she's a fabulous person, but is very serious about her dancing. So now we want to turn the weak frame into a good frame. Yep, you see it's nice and wide, it's fair, it's level. My elbows are wide, they're not behind me. So if I take my elbows behind me, that's gonna bring my partner too close to me and that's an artificial connection. So, and again, if this is your first time dancing, first time doing American Smooth, don't worry. There may be terms I'm throwing out that you aren't familiar with, that's okay. The important thing is that you're trying something new. All right, so again, what we really wanna do, again, I do not expect everyone to have the pole at this point, but the next time that you practice your frame, go ahead and see if you can find a broomstick or a shower curtain rod and make sure that you widen your elbows. You bring yourself to the front of your foot so that the pole is touching your collarbone. This creates good posture. You wanna make sure that your head is stretching from the neck evenly on both sides. And then, no matter where you go, if you shift from foot to foot, it stays in your arm. So even if we do shaping, and again, if this is new to you, don't worry about it. Or if we do rotation, the pole doesn't move. But what I'm not doing is I'm not holding onto it for dear life. You might want to, but you're not. So I really encourage anyone who is training, whether it be socially, competitively, if you're doing American Smooth and or International Standard, 
this is going to be your best friend and worst nightmare. But if you really want to take pride in your dancing and you want a good posture, a good frame, this is the cheapest and easiest training tool you may ever find. So now, how about we combine the first two exercises, all right? So I know, now we have to move and we have to hold our frame. So difficult, but I know you can do it. So, I'll do it from a side angle first. We can take our three steps forward. One, two, three, and our three steps back. One, two, three, while keeping the pole still. Ah. One, two, three. Good. So these two exercises combined will really help you warm up and get your body feeling in the mood for your American Smooth or your International Standard. Why do I keep saying International Standard? Because right now, the technique is the same. I know it's a shock that I said it, but when we are doing good technique, good footwork, good leg work, good frame, smooth and standard do not differ. It's when we get into steps and choreography, but when we get into character and style, that's where they differ. So that's my segue for getting into the music the character and current trends for waltz, tango, foxtrot, Viennese waltz in your American smooth dances. Okay, so let me put the pole down. So first, for those of you who are dancing along or for those of you who are just watching, and you know what? If you want to videotape this through your phone or through your iPad, I don't mind. This is not proprietary information. I would love for everyone to have this information. So we're going to do a simple little practice routine. It's going to be for the style and the characterization of our American Smooth dances. So again, if you want to use this for later, please feel free to videotape with your phone. I don't mind. All right. So now, I know probably because I'm on a computer, it's going to look backwards. However, what we're going to do is we're going to use our left foot because I'm just left foot dominant. <laughs> so we're going to take one forward step or one hesitation step with our left foot. So we're going to go forward one and tap the right foot. We go back two with the right foot, tap the left foot. We're going to go side to our left or you can go to your right if it's backwards, but side to your left, we're gonna go side, tap, and side, tap. Typically, these are called forward and back hesitations. We're going to use these steps and steps like them in all four of the dances. So again, the first part of this routine is left foot forward, right foot back, left foot side, right foot side. Now that we've done that, we're going to do something called whisks or fifth positions. Names don't really matter that much, but it's just for instant recall. So we have our left foot free, we're gonna go side, we're gonna take our right foot behind us, and then we're gonna replace our weight to our front foot, which is our left foot. Same thing on the other side, side right, back left, forward right. We do two of those. All right, so let's back up and let's do it again. We get a little closer so you can see my feet. So we're gonna do forward hesitation on the left, back hesitation on the right, side hesitation on the left, side hesitation on the right. Now we do a whisk or a back rock with our to our left, we go side, back, replace the weight, side to the right, back, replace the weight. Okay, so everyone who I can see, <laughs> or two of you, how are we doing with the choreography so far? Thumbs up? Good, so let's make it more difficult. <laughs> okay, 
So now I do have to make a disclaimer and I promise we're gonna get into music in a second. If you are at home, make sure that you're aware of your surroundings. Like if there's an animal, another person, a lampshade, be careful with these next couple steps. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a three step turn. We're gonna to go to our left first. We're gonna go forward turning, side turning, side turning. And we landed our way on our left foot. Now, we're gonna to go to our right. We're gonna go forward right turning, side left turning, side right turning. Good. If you are in a confined space, do side together side. So if you cannot turn without knocking things over in your house or wherever you are, just go side together side, side together side. Same number of steps, there's just no turn. That's totally fine. All right, so let's back up. We're almost done with our little mini practice routine. I promise there will be music, not just my boring nasal voice. <laughs> Sorry, my husband just gave me a really weird look. Okay. So, and it will help to have our arms out for balance if you're dancing along. So we're going to go forward left and hold, back right and hold, side left and hold, side right and hold. To the left, rock, rock. To the right, rock, rock. Side to the other side or turn. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. All right. So one more little thing before we finish this choreography. And again, just a practice choreography. It's not syllabus. You may not even do it while your partner dancing. This is just for you to practice your own style and characterization when you're practicing at home or at a studio if you're lucky enough to be at one. Okay. So. We just did our turns, one, two, three, one, two, three, or side together, side, side together, side, if you're at home. We have our left foot free. We're gonna step diagonally across, and we're gonna point our right foot. Now we're going to step diagonally across with the right foot, point the left foot. That's it. So we're just using some key elements from solo dancing from American Smooth Dancing, and now we're going to put them into the different dances. First dance is waltz. It's WTFVW. Waltz, tango, foxtrot, Viennese waltz. So let's try it with music. So again, real quickly, we go forward and hold, back and hold, left, right, Left side hold, right side hold, side to the other side or turn. One, two, three. One, two, three. Step, point, step, point. Okay, so let's try with a more traditional song first. And I will explain what that means after we get some music and get actually dancing. If you're dancing, if not, just enjoy. <laughs> I will dance for you and you can record this if you wish on your phones. Okay, maestro, please. <laughs> All right, so the music might be a little bit soft, but I will count with my fingers and then we'll go. Okay? Ready? One, two, three. Go forward, back, side, side. Side, rock, step, side, rock, step, turn, two, three, turn, two, three, step, and pull, step, and pull. Good. And now I do realize there's probably a little bit of a delay because Zoom is complicated at best. <laughs> but as long as you're kind of dancing with music, and if my count is off because of the transmission, just dance with the music that you hear. All right, so that was just doing the, the steps. Let's do it again to the same song, and then we can talk about style and character of waltz. 
Maestro, please. <laughs> okay, so make sure you have the arms out. We'll go in a second. So we have after three. One, two, three, go forward, back, side, 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 rock, step, side, rock, step, turn, and turn. Step, pull, step, pull. Good. All right. So now that was doing it with you know, good posture, fairly good footwork. Waltz. American waltz is becoming what we call a heavy dance. There's a lot of pendulum action or a lot of what we call kind of a swing and a sway if you are familiar with those terms. And in American Smooth, the songs that are being played at social dances, at competitions, for showcase routines, is dictating the kind of development and the progression of the styles. Walt is now, they're playing more heartfelt and even sometimes sad and very emotional songs. So we reflect that in our dancing by really trying to feel, I know this is, this is the artsy stuff of dancing. I went technical and now I'm going artsy to where we're trying to fill out every movement. Instead of just going one, two, three, four, that's really cute and bouncy, we want to glide and we want to have that smooth, fluid action that is indicative of waltz. So we're now going to play a more contemporary song. <laughs> I'm getting raised eyebrows from my technique or my technical guy, which is my husband and business partner, but let's try to make everything really smooth if you're dancing. And again, if you're just watching and enjoying, have fun. <laughs> okay. So we're really going to try to make everything smooth. Okay. So after three, and one, two, three. Go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, three, one. And whisk, one, two, three, one. Turn if you can. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. Very nice. All right. So everyone who's watching, thumbs up. Do we understand what waltz is? <laughs> Good. I got like four thumbs from three people. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So next is tango. Now, the next two dances, American Tango and American Foxtrot, have changed. Well, actually, Viennese Waltz, too. Actually, the last three dances have changed significantly from their international standard origins. All right, so American Tango, all tangos really did originate from Argentine Tango way back centuries ago in Argentina. We all know the stories. I don't need to go into it because <laughs> it's not family friendly. However, American tango is a unique blend of Argentine tango, international tango, pasa doble, and even sometimes things like samba or Latin. All right, so let's, I know I can talk forever about dancing. Let's do our same routine that we have our forward, left, back, right, side, left, etc. But let's make it sharp because tango is unlike the other three dances. It's not soft, it's not romantic, it's not even fluid. It's very sharp, it's very almost kind of curt, and it's staccato. So let's do our routine and make sure every step we take has a sharpness to it. 
Yes, so with music, please. <laughs> But let's do, uh, I'm, I need to tell my <laughs> technical guy, uh, let's do the, is it tango jack? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna do more of a traditional style tango first. Okay, five, six, seven, eight, forward, back, side, 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 rock step, side. Turn it again, one, two, three, one, two, three, Step and hold, step and hold. Good. Kind of fast, right? <laughs> so tango is faster than waltz. Most of you who know dancing know that. Let's really see if we can get a sharp, fast action. So those hesitations are no longer hesitations. We're gonna go forward, back, side, side, the rock steps. We'll go slow, quick, quick, slow, quick. We'll make them a little slower. So let's try it again. All right. Five, six, five, six, seven, eight, left forward, back, side, 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 rock step, side, rock step, turn and pull, turn and pull, step, point, step, So that was your more traditional international style. I know that we're doing solo work and it has arms waving about, which it is more American. However, let's now give it that Argentine tango sort of flavor. We're gonna play another song that most of you probably know. And we're going to make it a little bit slower, a little bit, I hate to use the word, sensual but it's more purposeful so we're not going to be so fast we're going to take it more like an argentine tango milonga style okay okay we'll have our arms out yes most people probably have heard this song before okay we have five six Five, six, seven, eight, go forward and hold, back and hold, side and hold, side and hold, side, rock step, side, rock step, turn and hold and turn and hold. Now these are going to be really slow. Good. So those last couple steps were like what we call swivels or ochos in Argentine tango. If you've ever seen anything, I mean, uh, what is it? Shall we dance or scent of a woman? There's been some tango elements in there to where it's softer, but it doesn't mean it's not tango. So let's try it again. And we'll do the slower, more fluid style of tango. Okay, still having a good frame. Yeah, five, six, seven, eight, forward, back, side, 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 rock step, side, rock step, turn, and pull, pull, turn, and Good. All right. So now let's actually go back to that other song, even though it's more traditional. Let's do everything in a what we call a pasa doble style. Pasa doble is huge in American style tango choreography and the characterization because it it has that sharpness, that staccato, that confidence. So we're gonna go back to the other song and we're gonna try to even, dare I say, stomp our feet a little bit, like really like doing the pasa doble style. And if you've never done it, try it. Okay, so we have five, six, five, six, seven, eight, forward, back, side, 
side, side, front step, side, front step, turn and pull, turn and pull, step, point, step, point. <laughs> Thank you for those of you who are clapping. All right, so good, right on time. So now let's get into, I know I can't ask any questions right now. We will do a question and answer at the end. So let's get into American Foxtrot. I dare say that American Foxtrot has the most, or the most options for style. It is really, evolved from international foxtrot which is that you know nice smooth slow action and we sometimes have that but now we have things like kind of jazz broadway fosse and then we have latin latin has a huge influence in american smooth especially in tango and foxtrot we also have the bluesy jazzy kind of like the west coast swing just really like cool cat in town sort of style all right so we're still going to use the same little practice pattern but we're going to do it to three different songs the first song we're going to keep it fred astaire style so the 1940s the 1950s nice and smooth happy upbeat and light same pattern same steps just different character whenever the music starts <laughs> ah technology gotta love it sorry technical difficulties Okay, let's practice our pattern. One. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, are we ready? Okay, so just think 1940s, 1950s, and we'll do our pattern. Five, six, seven, eight, four, forward, back, forward, side, and Good. No matter if you are a fan of the 40s and 50s, if you like that sort of style, that kind of music, you can't help but kind of sway, move your shoulders. It just gives you a happy upbeat sort of feeling. So let's do it again because it's also my favorite style too. But and then we'll get into the other styles of our foxtrot. Same thing. Five, six, five, six, seven, eight. Forward and hold. Back and hold. Side and hold. Side and hold. Side. Front step. Side. Turn. You can Step away from the swing. All right. So that's also the easiest one to interpret because that is Foxtrot. It's traditional Foxtrot music. That's where a lot of the steps are based off of. Now, if I can remember which songs I wrote down for Paul, we're going to get into more of the Broadway jazzy style. It's a little bit sharper. There's a little bit more what we call intention. It doesn't have that real floating style. It's if you ever think about a Broadway show or like jazz fingers, that's the style we're talking about. So we're gonna do again, we're all gonna be using the same practice pattern, but it's gonna feel totally different because we're doing a different style in each different dance. So we're gonna do the more Broadway jazzy style. Already you can feel it. Five, six, five, six, seven, eight. Forward, back, side, 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 
See, same steps, slightly different. There's more punch to it, and that's the jazzy Broadway sort of style. All right, how am I doing on time? Oh, perfect. Now, like I said, American Smooth is very, very unique in that it pulls from so many different dance styles, but particularly Latin and standard. It's this unique blend of both styles with the jazz, with the contemporary, with the lyrical. So it's right now probably one of the hardest styles to judge because there are so many different ways that you can interpret each unique dance. And you probably already heard the song. So now we're gonna get into the West Coast swing, but also the Latin, because I'm gonna try to combine the two. So it's like you're dancing sharp. You're dancing like really with a Latin action, but you also kind of don't care. So it's a really difficult thing to accomplish that you're just too cool for school basically. So it will depend on the music. And I know this is actually, I, if you have never danced American Smooth, these are, tend to be higher level concepts, but it's kind of fun to play around with character and style and just have fun with it. Again, especially if I can't see your camera, I can't see what you're doing. So you can do whatever you want, as long as you're safe at home. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, when the music has a slow part, and I'll coach you through it. We're gonna have that West Coast swing, like sailor shuffle, really smooth, cool action. But when it hits, we're gonna have a Latin action. Yeah. Whatever arms you wanna do right now, as long as you don't knock something over at home. So, Maestro, please. Okay, so it starts kind of slow. Five, six, five, six, seven, eight. Forward and back. Side and side. Side. Walk, step, side. And turn. Quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick, step, quick, step, forward. <laughs> See how I naturally change my style with the music picked up? This is a really great song because it starts cool, West Coast swing and jazzy, and then it goes into those hard hitting beats that are just so fun to accent. And probably some of you are thinking, what, Julianne? Let's try it again. So again, really listening to the music, and that's what we call musicality. That's what a lot of this a lot of lecture is, is that the different styles have their own unique musicalities. So let's try it again. Let's, let's see what I come up with. Same pattern, same pattern. Five, six, seven, eight. Forward, back, side, side, side. Rock, step, side, and turn. Slow, quick, slow, quick, quick, step, quick, step. See, at the end, you could be Latin and have that too cool for school sort of attitude. All right, and that's, so when we're talking about style and character, it's very intangible at times because everyone feels the music differently. But it's okay to express your individuality. That's what dancing is. That's what the arts are for. We want to celebrate everybody. Everybody's unique, everybody is special, and they have their own ways of expressing themselves, and that's what we want to celebrate. So, now, last dance, which is funny. So anyone who's ever come from international standard will be completely confused by American Viennese waltz music. A uh, little quick anecdote is that my husband and I used to compete professional American smooth. He has a background in international standard and Latin, for the longest time, he would raise his eyebrows when I would play practice music for being his walls. It's so different. It's rock ballads and country ballads and even blues and jazz. 
it really doesn't look a thing like traditional standard Viennese walls. There are elements, but it is morphed into a style all its own. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the same practice pattern again to not confuse anyone, to really keep it as simple as possible. We're going to play two different styles of Viennese waltz music. The first one is more traditional. So you can go ahead and you can have that big frame if you have the space. If you're dancing, if not, again, I'm just performing for you, which I'm used to. So, all right, so first one is the Celtic Knights. All right. See how it's that nice kind of driving rhythm? I'll count you in. One, two, three, four, five, six. Forward, back, side, 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 drop, step. I'm going slow. And one, and turn. Step, step, and point. Good. I took it easy on you guys. I could have gone faster, but it can be really fast. So with that style of music, it's, it feels very regal. It encourages you to have that nice tall frame that we worked on in the beginning. If you have your pole at home handy, that's great. But trying to really keep that air of regalness with that song. So let's do that song again before we get into the more contemporary sort of style. Same pattern, same routine. Okay, so after six, one, two, three, four, five, six, forward, back, side, 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 rock, step, side, turn, one, and two, step, and point, step, and point. I'm assuming good, because some of you can't see, which is totally cool. So I'm assuming everyone is doing fabulous. Now, let's get into the more contemporary, modern sort of style of being these walks. Doesn't mean the technique changes, the mood and the character changes. Much like the regular waltz or the traditional waltz, the songs that they're playing now for American style Viennese waltz, they're really just, there's so much emotion behind them. And it's positive and it can be you know, sad or heartfelt, heart wrenching. And when you get to that level, being able to express the different emotions for a different song, it's just, it really, it's so amazing to be able to do that. So whether it's social, whether it's competitive, whether it's a show, just being able to connect yourself to the music it's just an incredible feeling. So, sorry, that's my little soapbox moment, probably 349. I do it, but so let's do the more contemporary style of song with the same steps. All right. And this is a Venus waltz, I promise you. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, side. Side, side, rock, step, side, rock, step, turn, and hold, turn, and hold, and side. Yeah. And some of you may notice that I am changing the timing of the steps. It's based on the song. So with this song, it has that long, drawn out sort of uh, vocal, so I believe it's Ed Sheeran. So when he takes his time and really taking your time for the steps, it connects to the music. So let's try that again. And thank you all for being here again. I know it's a lot of information. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, forward, back, side, 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 rock, step, side, rock, step, turn, and hold, turn, and hold, step, yeah, and I know I changed the timing again, but the music told me what to do. Now, 
what does that mean? The music told me what to do. When you're listening to how the music is put together, it's whether it, it has a highlight, it kind of it crescendos up, or if it stops or it has a drop. That's what we say, the music told me what to do. That's our musicality. Okay, wow, that was so much information in just almost an hour. So in recap, what we did, we did our walking exercise, trying to make sure we have good, tidy, I know you can't see my feet, feet and legs. Before you start dancing, whether you practice at home, whether you're lucky enough to go into a studio or a gym, start your practice by three walks forward. One, two, back one, two, three, and you can build a lot of techniques from there. Second thing we covered, let me get my best friend. The best, again, some people have nightmares because I do harp on this, the best and cheapest frame training technique tool. Just a shower curtain rod helping you maintain your frame. Wide at the elbows, chest expanded, lifted, arms do not ever do the W. That's the weak frame. We want a nice, strong frame. And this is for leaders and followers. This is completely neutral in its training. So whether I am doing a follower's position or more of a leader's position, this is completely neutral and is really one of the cheapest and the best training tools. If you train on your own or if your coach already does this, that's fantastic. So, and it also has the Tony Redpath stamp of approval. She is the one who passed this on to me, passed this knowledge on to me. And she is an amazing woman, also a four times US smooth champion. So it has some merit. Okay, so we're off the table. We talked about character and style. American Waltz, probably the one that has deviated the least from its international roots. It has that swinging sort of pendulum action. There's flight. It tends to be softer in its styling. So a little bit softer in the styling. You don't lose tone, you don't lose frame, but it's not as sharp and staccato as a tango. Tango has its Argentine tango with some of the swiveling action, rondes, but it also has international tango, which has the sharp, quick footwork and the pasa doble, like foot stomping sort of action that is very popular in American tango. American Foxtrot, traditional 1940s, 1950s, American songbook, rap pack, smooth, but not as soft as waltz. We have the jazz, fossey Broadway style, and we have the Latin and the West Coast swing, kind of too cool for school attitude. Viennese waltz, the more traditional frame, style, like when you do your reverse turns, your naturals, your chain steps, or more of the contemporary sort of style. Wow, so that's a lot of information.